Joining me now is Percy Lazard with the Indigenous Studies Program at Wolford Laurier University. Percy, thank you for joining us. Why is Squeeze Percy Lazard? Uh, I want to uh, first acknowledge that I'm an invited guest on the Dish with One Spoon um, Haldeman Track, uh, Three Fire Confederacy, Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee peoples, and that I'm having this complicated and complex conversation on your homelands. Um, first, I'd like to comment that it just feels like another colonial harm to uh, First Nations, Métis, Inuit, Afro-Indigenous and Black Indigenous people to have this <clears throat> information shared um, after, uh, especially after the International Day of the World's Indigenous People, where it centered Indigenous transmission of knowledge and Indigenous women and femmes, um, that it just feels like another colonial harm and act. Uh, I can understand, Percy, the personal feelings that you're having today. You yourself, and our viewers may not be aware, I understand that your parents are residential school survivors. Can you talk about the personal feelings of reading something like this settlement? I think uh, just for those who are tuning in, content warning, trigger warning, Indian residential schools, colonial arm. Um, yes, I am the adult child to uh, and grandchildren to Indian residential schools, to parents and my sibling, who is uh, 13 months older than I am, was the last person in my family to have gone to residential school. I think this is another act of harm where Indigenous people and their intersecting identities, which includes two SLGBTQQI folks, another act of violence, erasure, and disappearance uh, when we decenter uh, lived experiences uh, and direction from those who have been harmed, then we have acts such as this by the government. And it really uh, has me want to look at this mythology of separation of nation and state that often Indigenous people have been accused of, that our indigeneity, our spirituality was a mythology. But again, just looking at how the Canadian nation state and uh, organized religions are hand in hand. Um, and it really is, is a continuation of uh, broken treaties, broken promises, broken agreements um, set out and the long uh, legacy of colonial harm by both entities. Now, accountability has been a huge factor that's come up in the last several years. Uh, where do you think this sits along accountability? Because we know this deal was in 2015, but mm -hmm. there has been a lot unearthed since that time. Does this set anything back? It absolutely sets things back because, again, it, it undermines this, the, the, the labor of 6,000 um, folks who were brave enough under the conditions of colonialism to come forward and share their experiences in the 126 years of Indian residential schools and contribute to the thousands of pages and the truth and reconciliation and then one of 94 calls to action. It undermines that and it undermines the processes of the, the, the commissioners and the First Nations, Métis, Inuit, Afro-Indigenous, Black Indigenous folks who are brave enough to share their story about the egregious harms they experienced in the legacy uh, that happened here in Indian residential schools. It undermines um, positioning survivors, people with lived experiences, and again, uh, forces survivors and folks like me who are, are impacted by uh, multi-generational uh, impacts of ongoing colonialism of the residential schools. Okay, thank you very much, Percy Lazard. We understand it's a very difficult topic and a very complex topic. We thank you for your time. Not enough time to obviously go over this today, but we appreciate you talking to us this morning. That's Percy Lazard from the Indigenous Studies Program at Wilford University. Thanks again.